April looks to be an incredibly busy month. First, we start with really an anniversary. Uh, a year ago, we were looking at uh, Good Friday and a, a situation where COVID restrictions were all across the country, churches were being shut down, people were being arrested for throwing a baseball with their son or their daughter in the park, and people wondered, is the Constitution still in place? That's when we had the On Fire Christian Church, a church that was trying to figure out a way to do a, a get-together that was safe around Easter. So they had the idea of coming together in their cars and having a service in their cars. And of course, this ended up being what we called the shot heard around the world, and it was the first victory for really anything during uh, the COVID-19 restrictions across the country, but the first really in the history of the country for religious freedom during a pandemic. We're gonna have a First Liberty Live uh, on this. This is something you won't wanna miss. That'll be one thing in April for sure. But we also have our fellowship about to occur with some of the top young students across the country. We'll be meeting in the East Coast, uh, developing the future leaders for religious freedom for our country. Uh, additionally, we have two cases uh, that are sitting at the Supreme Court right now that we, we got a good signal on both of those. The Supreme Court asked for the other side to file responses, which is a very good sign. So be keeping that in your prayers. There, there could be big news coming uh, on those as well. And of course, I think everybody is focusing on or realizing how important right now the filibuster is. The filibuster, of course, is what we have in the Senate to keep legislation from just flying through the House and the Senate based upon one majority party having control. In the filibuster, it takes 60 votes, so it takes both parties to actually come together to pass legislation. That keeps things uh, much more uh, less extreme, I guess I could say, and we don't have things that go through that could be really jerk our country in one direction or another, or maybe even structurally change it permanently. Uh, there is talk for the first time in maybe 150 years of changing or even destroying the filibuster so that more radical legislation could get through. A lot of people are talking about H.R. 1, which would dramatically change all of our election laws. Of course, there's the Equality Act, which would strip away religious freedom from every American across the United States. Uh, it would actually take the Religious Freedoms Restoration Act and empty it uh, from protection, used either as a defense or to bring lawsuits in numerous suits across the country. And then, of course, there's the most dangerous of all, which is court packing, where you would actually have judges added to the courts, justices added to the Supreme Court, just so politicians could get to the results that they want. When you do something like court packing, you don't just change the country, you really destroy the rule of law. This has happened in Venezuela. Uh, five years ago, and it didn't take very long. It's, it's courting tyranny. And so it's something we have to stop. So we're going to be working very hard to make sure that people know the history on court packing. They know the importance of keeping that filibuster in place so that we have the rule of law, so that we have our Constitution in place. If you get rid of uh, the rule of law, you really don't have constitutional rights. If one party can simply add justices to the Supreme Court to get to whatever result they want, you only have the rights that the majority party wants you to have. We have to make sure that doesn't happen in this country and we are fully committing everything we've got to make sure that court packing does not occur and our courts are really not destroyed. Uh, additionally, they are looking at judges. Of course, the new administration has come in. There are already 68 seats open as a number uh, of more Democrat appointed judges have now taken senior status or they're stepping down. And so the new administration will begin to appoint those judges. We are doing heavy research. We are going to make sure that those judges that go on the court are as consistent and supportive of religious freedom as we can possibly get. So there's a lot of work ahead. Uh, there's a lot of important battles going on in addition to all the new lawsuits I didn't even talk about that will be coming. But we're in a battle for religious freedom. Thank you for being a part of this battle. This is a really important time for the future of our country and we so appreciate you. God bless you.